By now, you've probably seen this Habs Tonight podcast interview with one Nick Suzuki and his mom, Amanda Suzuki. It's a pretty good, wholesome watch, and I definitely do recommend any Canadians fan to go out there and give it a listen. Link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to the entire audio on YouTube. But I wanted to make this video because of an article that I saw going over a few of the quotes from Nick Suzuki from this interview. Now, it's a long podcast, so of course, there are a lot of quotes not just from Nick, but from his mom as well. But when it comes to these individual quotes, I think it makes for a pretty interesting video topic, so I thought, hey, why not? Let's make a video about this entire thing. So our source for today's video is Montreal Hockey Now, who went out there and transcribed a whole bunch of the Suzuki comments, so it's easier for me to screenshot, put it on the screen, etc, etc. The article title is This Suzuki Enjoyed Another First Round Exit for the Leafs, and it was published a few weeks ago. Now, right away... I get it, this article is a little bit clickbaity, but it's not going out there and being disingenuous. While the title might be a little bit more on the brash side, it's not completely inaccurate. And so, if we go over onto what Nick Suzuki says in this video podcast interview, he goes out there and talks about the Canadians, as well as how they made the Stanley Cup Finals last year, how they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning, as well as how he felt when the Lightning faced off against the Leafs in the 2022 first round the year after. The Leafs? Uh, it was the first time I was cheering for Tampa, so Suzuki said with a smirk when asked if he was surprised the Leafs choked again. It was weird cheering for the team that beat you last year, but it turned out pretty well. Now, that's the video. It's a pretty small comment. I get that. There are a few other comments that I feel like are worth noting that are actually written about in this piece as well, so I guess we'll talk about those two to fill out the time. But Nick Suzuki went out there and pretty much threw some shade at the Toronto Maple Leafs in the best way possible. Now, it's interesting to me because he is from London, Ontario, Canada, meaning that you know, it wouldn't be too bad of an assumption to make that he grew up a Leafs fan, but it's cool to see him go out there and embrace the Montreal Canadiens' attitude and mindset when it comes to their opinions about the Leafs, especially when he's talking about the team that beat them in the Stanley Cup Finals last year. He's going out there and saying, yeah, I know we lost to them last season and it was really heartbreaking, and for that reason it was weird to cheer for these guys the year after, but it was alright. I don't know what he's referring to at the end there. Maybe he's saying, okay, because Tampa Bay lost in the finals, that's what makes it all right. Maybe seeing the Lightning get so close to a three-peat and then just have that wither away in their fingertips made it all right as well. But at the end of the day, Nick Suzuki's going out there and saying that for Toronto, it was pretty good seeing them lose out in round number one. Also, I wanted to go over Nick Suzuki and just his entire progression from the last year's playoffs into this season because... I think a lot of people would go out there and say that Suzuki, in 2021-2022, while sure he did progress points per game-wise and points-wise, it is a very fair opinion to have that he probably could produce and show off a lot more than he has so far. He had 16 points in 22 games played in the postseason when the Canadians went to the finals and 41 points in 56 games in that full season. The next year, though, saw him put up 21 goals and 40 assists for 61 total points in the 82-game campaign while also being a minus 29. You could very well assume that with the addition of Slavkovsky as well as a whole bunch of other players on this roster, Evgeny Dadanov, Kirby Doc, hopefully you've got Carey Price coming back. And so for Nick Suzuki, I think the team he's going to be playing with in 2022-2023 it's going to be a lot better than the team he saw last season, and he still took somewhat of a progression in the way that he plays the game. Not points-wise, but in terms of his all-round capabilities, it was a very good transition season from last year to this year for Nick Suzuki. And it's cool because the same interview with his mom on the Habs Tonight podcast has a few comments from Nick himself going over some of those similar things. I think as players, it's our job to make sure that the rebuild is not five years long. I think we've got a ton of great young pieces, good leaders to learn from that want to be a part of it, and I think we can be pretty competitive next year even with the style that we play. I think we can surprise a lot of teams, and maybe the year after, we can add a few pieces and try to make the playoffs. That's kind of my vision. I don't know what the management has in store for us, but I think as players, it's our job to go out there and win games. I'm really not worried about where we finish and trying to get a high pick. That's not really what we're worried about. We just want to go out there and win. Now, I think from my POV, from a guy that's not in the locker room and I'm not playing for the Canadians, I'm not one of the boys, I'm just a guy going out there and watching from my television screen, 
I'd be okay if the Canadians sucked again. Just my little two cents out there. If they get Connor Bedard, then yeah, okay, you're going to be the real winners of the next decade and a half, I guess. I would love Bedard to go to my Vancouver Canucks, but if he goes to Montreal, that definitely will make for some very interesting conversation as well. He also admitted how difficult last season was until the major changes were made with the hirings of Jeff Gordon, Kent Hughes, and then Marty St. Louis. It was definitely, you could say, a tale of three seasons, he said, of last year. Just the way we started. There was a lot of hope and excitement around the team, but obviously we started the season without Pricey and Webby and Eddie and all these guys that we relied on throughout the playoffs. It definitely kind of set us back. The short summer, the kind of quick training camp, so I don't know if we were prepared the best to start the year. You could see that because we didn't start very well. Then, it was pretty dark times through a bunch of losing streaks and not winning a ton of games, but then we switched a ton up. Management, coaches, everything like that, and the turn. Everyone could see the turn, and especially the players. We started playing a lot better and having fun again. When asked about the Marty St. Louis hiring, he says there was a bunch of rumors on who we were going to hire. Some guys with experience, some guys with maybe less. Marty kind of came out of nowhere. No one was really talking about him for the head coach job, and right away, I was super pumped just to learn from the legend himself. He's such a smart guy, amazing coach, and we're lucky to have him right now. And that appears to be the plan, because he's going to stick around for the next three seasons, I believe that's what the number is. And so for Nick Suzuki going out there as a smaller-ish player with two-way capabilities as a center... I think I'm ready to see it, man. I want to see what a full season's worth of Marty St. Louis coached Montreal Canadiens hockey looks like. Not just for the smaller players like the Caulfields and the Suzukis, but I want to see what St. Louis could do with a guy like Uri Slavkovsky as well. We already made the comments, or we talked about the comments from Marian Hosa saying that Slavkovsky reminds him of Yager. And, I mean, St. Louis played in an era where Yarmir Yager was doing his thing and scoring 100-something points a year with the Rangers, so who really knows if there's some sort of a base of knowledge that St. Louis could transfer onto that new URI first overall pick. Same with Doc as well. I think he probably needs that the most out of all the new faces on the Canadians. But either way, talk to the comments like your thoughts about Nick Suzuki and the comments that he made on the Haps Tonight podcast with his mom. Go ahead and listen to the entire interview. It's a very good one. It's very in-depth, and I do think it provides a lot of value for any Canadians fans looking to satisfy their hockey cravings during the offseason. Also, a link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read the article it's that we pulled the quotes from that transcribed the Suzuki radio hit. Radio hit. Podcast hit. There you go. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section either way about Suzuki and his opinions about the Lightning versus the Leafs. Do you think maybe, and this is just kind of a thought that entered my mind towards the end of the video here, do you think it's fair to say that a part of Nick Suzuki cheering for Tampa Bay last season in the playoffs was because of his friend Corey Perry? Like, I mean, Corey Perry was a veteran leader-type presence on the Canadians in 2021, so I think it would definitely be fair to say that Nick Suzuki would hold a guy like Corey Perry in somewhat of a high regard. And so, seeing him play off against a Toronto team that is supposed to be a division rival makes him go out there and say, yeah, I'd rather cheer for my friend in Corey Perry against a team that's an Atlantic division rival in Toronto that my fan base and everybody on my team is supposed to despise it makes a lot more sense, in my opinion, when you think about it like that. But either way, talk to the comments on your thoughts about Suzuki, the comments that he made, Toronto, Tampa Bay, etc., etc. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.